Hello everyone, welcome to the LTR Mandarin School YouTube channel. My name is Max and today's video is all about a very popular language learning app for Chinese and Japanese language learning students. The app is called Scritter and it's all about writing Chinese characters. So without further ado, let's jump straight into our Scritter review. Right then, first and foremost, what is Scritter? So if you don't know, Scritter is a language learning app for Chinese and Japanese, which is solely based around writing Chinese characters. So it's an app that does something that not many other apps in the market do, and that's focused specifically on writing. So Scritter is really good because it teaches you how characters in Chinese and Japanese are built. And this is particularly useful for beginner students of either of the languages because when you look at Chinese or Japanese as let's say an English native speaker it can be very intimidating and you almost want to give up before you've even started but stop wait there this is exactly why Scritter has been founded and created it's really really quite smart so in essence every Chinese character is built up through things called radicals, and radicals are parts of Chinese characters. So you could see them on the left side, the right side, the top or the bottom of any Chinese character. And when you know what these radicals mean and what they entail, you'll then start to be able to guess even other words or what they're related to going forward and down the line. And it also does the same as well for Japanese, so you can learn the three alphabets of Japanese on Scritter. You have hiragana, katakana, and kanji. And we won't explain why there's three alphabets in this video. We do have a blog, which will be in the description below, which you should read if you don't know about the three alphabets already. But in essence, that is what Scritter is. It teaches you exactly how Chinese characters and the Japanese alphabet are built up. And it is a very, very useful tool in doing just that. Right, so Scritter is built upon things called decks. So decks, they're almost kind of like flashcard decks, essentially. And Scritter has a huge database of these, both for Chinese and Japanese. And the great thing, of course, about decks means that when you go into the app, you don't have to follow a set procedure. Say, for example, with Duolingo, everyone does the same from top to the beginner things all the way down to the bottom. You all follow the same path not so on Scritter. Scritter you can choose. So for example, I'm a beginner in Japanese, but I'm more advanced in Mandarin Chinese. That's no problem with Scritter. You can jump straight in. I can pick, let's say the HSK five or six decks. I can find a Chung Yu deck, which is like idioms or proverbs in Chinese. But with Japanese, I can find decks related to Hiragana, Katakana, Kanji, or the beginner Japanese things of perhaps a hundred most commonly used kanji or the basic words of Japanese. So you can choose what decks you want. You can go into each deck and many of the decks, although not all of them, have an accompanying video as well. And I quite like some of these videos. Some of them introduce you to what you're about to learn. Some of them are a bit more fun. So the, the Katakana deck, was like a, a learn katakana challenge in two hours and the two presenters competed against each other to see who could get the biggest score. It's a 10 minute video, it's quite fun to watch because you can also learn and go along with them with your journey and it makes you almost feel like you're sharing it with someone else, which is always really good because with apps sometimes, the lack of feeling and sense of community is quite visible. So with this, I quite enjoyed the fact that you could follow other people's stories as well. So you can jump into the decks, you can subscribe or essentially join as many of these decks as you wanted. You can download them to your Scritter and then bam, you can use them as much as possible. We'll come on to more of that in a second, but that is essentially what Scritter is based on. And the good thing as well is they're always looking to add new decks. So they have textbooks. So for example, if you're studying from a certain textbook. Scritter may well have decks related to that textbook, so you can take away what you've been learning in your face-to-face -face class, for example, and you can review it 
using an app like Scritter and that's really, really good for retaining the characters because of course, in a classroom, we're not remembering every single thing we've learned, unfortunately. We need to review it. That is where something like Scritter is particularly useful. So that is an introduction to the Scritter decks. Another thing I wanted to quickly touch on, which is something I do quite often in our app reviews, is check the mobile versus desktop thing, because I actually quite like to use desktop, and I also think it's a good sign of an app's ability if they can adapt to both mobile and desktop. Of course, most people these days are using mobile, and most of these apps are designed for probably 98% mobile usage. However, I also think it's useful for them to accommodate for people that are, for example, studying at home. For example, I've got my setup here. Maybe I want to study on my laptop every now and again, and I don't want to study on my small phone screen. Scritter is actually really nice on desktop version, but there's one big problem. Scritter is, of course, a writing app. So using it on the computer almost defeats the object. However, they do have some cool numbers and statistics and graphs, which you should be seeing on the screen right now. I'm a big fan of number crunching and, and graphs and progress. It helps my motivation. It helps me when I see things are increasing and getting better and that graph is going upwards and I've gone from 10 to 50 words in two weeks and then 50 to 80 and then 80 to hopefully 800 further down the line. It motivates me to keep going. It makes me realize that every small step I'm making is big progress for the future. So Scritter on desktop, I wouldn't study on there because I did try it with the mouse and it is quite awkward because of course you're having to replicate natural finger movements on a mouse. And for me, I found that quite difficult, not very natural because when am I ever gonna draw a character in Chinese or Japanese with a mouse? I wouldn't even in English. So use Scritter to study on your phone, but by all means do log into the desktop version, which you can see just behind me on my screen, and have a little look at the stats. You can check your day streak, you can check how many, your percentage retention, so how well you can remember words, and all these kinds of things. So have a look and don't disregard it, but for mobile versus desktop study on Scritter, stick to mobile. Okay, so it's time to actually take a look at the lessons of Scritter and what they're all about. And Scritter is essentially broken down into two different types of lessons. You can learn or you can test and review. Quite obvious what both of them mean, essentially. Learn is something that you do once, you go over the stroke order, the definition, the pronunciation, etc. And review, is essentially where you take what you've just learned and you review it. And what you're meant to do, ideally, is review every day, in theory. Scritter is an SRS system or SRF software, which is spaced repetition software. And this means that what Scritter tries to do is show you the same characters over and over and over again until they're firmly drilled into that head of yours. So although it can sound repetitive, it's a very, very good way to learn. Just like Hack Chinese, which is another very good character learning app, although not for writing, but more based around retention. So that's another one we did a video review of, which you can find the link to as well in this video. But back to Scritter. So when I learn, I will learn, as I said, the stroke order, how to read it, the definition, if there is one, or how to pronounce it. And then I will write the character three times. Once by following their lead, as you'll see on the screen. Secondly, by doing it myself, but with the character still in the background. And thirdly, you're given a blank canvas and you're all on your own. Don't worry though, you can use the gestures on the Scritter app to give you hints or show you the next one, or even just show you how to write it completely. If you go into settings, there's a menu called gestures and you can discover how to use these. They're quite cool. It's quite similar to how Apple sometimes does with its Apple mouse software where you can double tap to do something or swipe up with one finger or pinch to zoom in, things like that. 
And essentially that's what Scritter is. It's really, really quite simple. And the idea is to go over it again and again and again and keep drilling it in. So I'm doing it at the moment for the Japanese alphabet and I'm also doing it for more advanced Chinese characters. So I'm writing the characters, I'm discovering how they're built, I'm taking in the pronunciation or the definition and I'm doing it over and over and over again. And the great thing is, you don't even really need to be fully engaged into the app like maybe others that you need to be fully engaged in. You can kind of just play around whilst you're watching TV or there's some music in the background and you're just learning bit by bit as you go forward. And that is essentially what the Scritter lessons entail. So I just wanted to go over three useful features of Scritter that I quite liked. So the first one is going back to the lessons where we talked about when you review. What I really liked about this is that you can personalize your review sessions so they don't always have to be the same. In fact, they could be different every time. So when you go to review, you're given a number of options that you can see on the screen right now. So you can choose whether you wanna focus on writing, whether you want to focus on the definition or pronunciation. You can choose how many cards are included in your review and you can choose which decks to include as well. So you could do a big review of all your decks just focused on writing or if you just wanted to focus on the definition and give writing a break, then you can just focus on that. So you just use the toggle buttons on and off, choose your deck, choose the number of cards and there you go. So you've created your own personalized review session where you can perhaps focus on your weaknesses. So I, I really liked that as a first useful feature. The second and third actually relate to the menu at the bottom of the Scritter app. So one is called My Progress. So this is basically where, again, you can start to see graphs and numbers, which as you probably know by now, I do quite like. And with these graphs and numbers, they tell you how many words you've studied, your attention rate and a number of other percentages, which I think is really useful. Look at these and you can see the progress that you make. I don't know if it works the same for you, but it really does help give me a kick in the right direction sometimes when I need it. And the third useful feature is the bottom corner of Scritter. It's called Words or My Words. And this is basically a list of all the words and letters that you've learned or symbols as well and you can flick through all of these and have a look at them all. You can click in and again, you can look at more statistics, funnily enough. So how well you remember it. Do you always remember it or are there times where you don't? And it gives you a breakdown of everything that you've learned. So you can sometimes just flick through these and just see again how far you've come. But also if you needed to know the definition of something or the pronunciation, go to my words, flick through it and everything's there for you. So that's three useful features of the Scritter app I really liked. Right, so we're coming towards the back end of our review now. So it's a good time for us to start talking about the good and the bad of Scritter. And I must admit, it is mainly very good, or in fact, it's really heavily weighted towards very good. So first and foremost, Scritter is obvious in what it does. It doesn't try and reinvent the wheel here. It tries to do exactly what it says on the tin effectively, and that is helping you write and retain Chinese characters. And from my experience so far, it does it really, really well. It's a really easy tool to just pick up. And I can't stress this enough, even just five, 10 minutes a day, you've probably heard other people say this before, but it makes the world of difference. I'm actually right now based in England and I'm worried about my languages in Chinese, Italian and Japanese slowly drifting away. But apps like this can make such a big difference. So the pro essentially is that it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's simple, it's effective and it does it very well. Another thing I liked, which I did touch on earlier, is that I quite like just picking this up when, for example, we're sat on the sofa, me and my wife, and then she puts the TV on. I can just sit and play on Scritter, even with the stuff going on in the background. It's not an app where you need complete focus and complete silence. You're almost just making shapes. You imagine if you're playing a game like Candy Crush. I see so many people on the London Underground, and also when I was in Beijing and Shanghai as well, 
just playing on Candy Crush and they're tapping, they're swiping, they're doing all these gestures. Actually, Squirt is very similar in what you do, but actually you're just learning instead of playing. So I can just play around, I start to become familiar with it, and all of a sudden I start to remember characters even when I don't realise I'm doing it. I'm just sat, maybe I'm looking at the TV, but I'm still playing on Scritter. So the pro there is that you can pick it up anywhere in any environment and you don't need to be fully engaged in it. Although of course it is better if you are fully engaged in it. The third pro I like about Scritter is the variety of decks. And having actually spoke to the founder of Scritter, Jake, we had a, a really good Zoom call a few months ago and his ambition to expand the number of decks that they've got is really, really quite impressive. So they're not set on what they've got now. They've recently, in the summer of 2021, had a, a big update, which they've just released, which is why I'm bringing you this review now. But they also want to increase more and they've got so many decks there that there really is something for everyone. Like I said, I'm a beginner in one of the two languages and I'm more advanced in the other. No problem at all with Scritter. You can use both no problem, which is really, really good. So that's a, a major positive, is that it fits beginner, intermediate and advanced students because of the amount of decks. So I wouldn't call these negatives as such, but it's more probably just constructive comments. So one thing I did like a lot about Duolingo that I've not really found another app does quite as well, is those personalised push notifications you get on your iPhone. Now, these can be annoying and I think you need to be in the right frame of mind to receive them. But if you're in study mode and you really want to improve in a language, I found that these learn five minutes today to improve your Italian or it's time to kind of learn Chinese with Dora. For me, it worked really, really well. And I think something like that could work on Scritter because as an example, on Duolingo, I hit a 300 plus day streak, I think. I felt just short of, of one year, unfortunately. Uh, but with Scritter, I've never done more than a three day streak so far. And I wonder if those notifications might just help me. Of course, it's my responsibility to pick up the phone. And the days I didn't do it is probably just down to pure laziness, other than work and filming these videos for you guys. But I think maybe a push notification would have worked there. So maybe Scritter could work on something like this, in my opinion. The next con, this is something that I think is quite important. The price of Scritter isn't the cheapest that you're going to get on the market. So it's 15 US dollars per month, although you can sign up for six months and also one year as well and get discounts. But I think as a casual language learner, I'm not sure if you're going to pay this. I think you need to be more of a, a hardened, focused, determined, driven learner to want to part with $15 every month to use Scritter. So although it's nothing against Scritter at all, I think the app is great and I think it's actually well worth the money considering you're invested into it and learning these languages like I am. But I think the $15 will put a lot of more casual language learners off maybe a lower price, maybe a 9.99 would be more appealing psychologically. Again, just an opinion of mine. And the third one, and this is just me being picky, I quite like fresh, clean, modern looking design. Some apps do it really, really well. There was a particular one called Drops that I really liked that had a beautiful, kind of very simplistic, clear layout. Scritter to me seems a little bit dated in its look. It doesn't look like the most modern looking app. Of course, everyone has different preferences here and for most people, they wouldn't care less. Anki is another really good example. It's a superb app and it's really highly rated, but its design is very old and it almost feels Windows 95 for those of you who are old enough to know what Windows 95 is. So it almost feels like you're going back in time to days of the, the mid nineties almost. Yet Anki is still really popular, so design absolutely isn't the be all and end all, but for me, it just enhances and puts the mark up even higher. I think Scritter maybe could improve on its design. Otherwise, I think it's a really, really good app. And now we're gonna answer the question on everybody's lips. Should you download Scritter? Of course, my answer here is yes. Scritter is a really, really good app and I must admit, I've been a bit naive with Scritter. I've known about it for a long, long time, 
probably about four years now, and I've never actually picked up and downloaded it. It wasn't after speaking with Jake, the founder of Scritter, that I actually thought I need to get into this. And he said, no, wait, we're gonna do a big upgrade, a big update on our system, then download it and play with it and see what you think. And I must admit, I've really enjoyed using it. Now my challenge is to start using it more and more, i.e. every single day. At the moment, I'm on and off a little bit too much. So that's my challenge now. But Scritter is such a great way to discover stroke order and an introduction to how Chinese and Japanese characters are built. So for beginners, I think this really, really is a must download. Add it to your portfolio of apps that you build up. So maybe do Chinese, hack Chinese, add Scritter to that, along with Flexi classes, of course, as you can see on my screen in the background. This is what you need to become fluent in a language, that holy grail word fluency. You're never gonna do it with just Scritter or just hack Chinese or just do Chinese. You've got to combine them all together, get your portfolio, build a folder, and take language learning lessons as well, flexi classes. <laughs> so, Scritter is a really, really good app. You can get a really good introduction to Chinese and Japanese, and for me, it is a resounding yes. And that 14.99 USD that I mentioned before, don't let it be a factor because I honestly recommend it incredibly highly. Okay, that sums up our Scritter review. If you're here still, thank you very much. It's great that you've managed to listen to my voice for so long. We have plenty of other app reviews as well. We've just done other ones on Preply, italki, Pleco, Hack and Do Chinese, as I've mentioned already, along with a load of others. We'll also do many more in the future. Just drop us a comment down below if there's a particular app you would like us to review, let us know, because we don't just look on Google, find the answer, type them down. We download the app, we play with it, we take a look at it, we critique it honestly, and we provide an excellent video, or I hope an excellent video for you, and also a blog post on our website. So if you haven't seen yet, we've also done a written review on Scritter, which can be found at ltl-school.com. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.